Good evening, I'm Roland Johanny. And I'm Frank Andrews. We have team coverage of the 84 Pennsylvania primary tonight with Newswire 16 computerized returns and live reports from Lackawanna, Luzerne, and Lycoming County. Plus the rest of the day's news, including the satellite repairmen working in outer space. Newswire 16 update is next. Don't miss WNEP Spring Fair. It's bigger and better than ever. In your car, listen to Newswatch 16 on WKRZ AM 1340. Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart, Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark with his backyard forecast, and Joe Zone on sports. This is the News Watch 16 update. Good evening, I'm Nolan Johan. And I'm Frank Andrews. Karen Hart is off. It's primary election day 1984. We've turned our studio into the News Watch 16 election center so that we can bring you northeastern and central Pennsylvania's most complete and accurate return. And we'll have team coverage as our reporters and crews track the winners and the losers in the 84 vote. And of course, we'll have all the day's news, sports, and weather. But... Let's get right to the business of watching your vote count. And let's begin with the latest returns in the Democratic presidential primary. There are 10 names on the Pennsylvania ballot today, but as you know, some of the candidates like John Glenn, Ruben Askew, and her Ernest Hollings have already dropped out of the race. Our computer tonight puts the leading vote-getters on the top, and you're seeing them in just that way. Right now, 49% of the statewide vote is in for President. Walter Mondale has 44% of that vote. Gary Hart has 33%. And Jesse Jackson has 20% of that vote. And then, of course, right behind them are all the other ones with uh, the results inconclusive at this time. But those are the front-running, the front-running three. Now that Mondale has apparently won the primary here in Pennsylvania, some say, some might say, that he can finally reclaim the title as the front-runner in the race for the Democratic nomination. But the former vice president told ABC News just a short time ago that he's not so sure about that. I'm not the front runner. I had a very good night tonight. So we've got nearly 50% of these states to go, and uh, many of the larger states. Uh, I think we're doing well. This is a very good night, but I'm not claiming any front runner's role. All right, now we're going to turn to another hot race, of course, in northeastern Pennsylvania, and that is in the 11th Congressional District. We want to show you some of our computerized returns because we have them right now in that race for the Democratic nomination in the 11th Congressional District. And there you see, with about 66% of the votes in, Paul Kanjorski, the attorney from Manicoke, leading with 48% of the vote. That's about 24,653 to incumbent Frank Harrison's total of 21,113, 41% of the vote. Now, we understand that we may have a major announcement coming from Frank Harrison. News Watch 16's Mark Davis live with that candidate right now. Mark, what's happening? Frank, uh... Frank Harrison just made a very brief, uh, only a several-minute statement to his supporters here at the Sheraton Crossgates Hotel in downtown Wilkesbury. But in that statement, he kind of backed out. He didn't exactly concede, but he did say the numbers of Luzerne County may be telltale numbers in that Paul Kanjorski has a sizable lead in Luzerne County, and it may be just too big of a lead to overcome in some of the outlying counties, Columbia, Montour, Sullivan, those counties. Now, we are waiting for Mr. Harrison to make his way over to us. He has promised us a live interview, but he is being mobbed by his supporters in the other end of the ballroom here. He, uh, again, has not exactly conceded, but things do not look good here at the Harrison camp at the Sheraton Cross States Hotel. They just told us that uh, the numbers in Luzerne County are too big, and uh, Mr. Harrison did say that if Paul Kanjewski is the nominee, he will support him in the November general election. So we hope to be back to you in just a few minutes with the candidate. Mark Davis, News Talk 16, live with the Instacam at the Sheridan Cross Gates in downtown Wilkesbury. Okay, Nolan, Mark, Frank. we'll go back to you in a second. We're going to switch pictures right now and get some reaction from the Kandrowski camp. Dan Fiorucci standing by live. Dan, what's the attitude there? Right now, there is cautious optimism, Frank. They didn't expect to be doing this well in Luzerne County. Earlier this afternoon, Paul Kandrowski told me that if he could win in Luzerne, he could win this election. Now, at this point, we have him about 3,000 votes ahead here in Luzerne, and that is extremely good news for him. He's not doing as well as he had hoped to do in the outlying counties, but he is doing better than expected here. As a matter of fact, Mr. Kanjorski is with us right now. Mr. Kanjorski, at this point, what does it look like to you? Well, we're very optimistic. Uh, we have uh, we, uh, discussed the returns in the six outer counties from Luzerne County, and at this point, we feel that... Uh, 
We will sustain a victory, but we are not declaring a victory tonight. We're waiting until the final returns in. They may be much later in the evening. Uh, I think I would like to thank everyone that participated in my campaign and, and say that we address ourselves to the issues. I think that uh, the voters of the 11th Congressional District accepted our message and they have been kind enough to understand what we are trying to sell for northeastern Pennsylvania. And I would only say that to all those people today that put their confidence in me, I hope not to let you down, that I'll work and do my best so that the promises and the ideals and the dreams that we have together will come true. Do you expect at this point it will be a long time before somebody declares a victory here? I will not anticipate what uh, Mr. Harrison will do. I certainly respect the fact that he wants to see a final result from the outer counties. I, if I were in his position, I would do the same. Okay, we do have some final results in Luzerne County. It shows you have 24,828 votes to Mr. Harrison's 21,237. That's a lead of 3,000 votes in excess of that. Any word from you at this moment? We're very optimistic. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Kanjorski. And that's what it is right now, Frank. Cautiously optimistic. Still no final word here. Okay, Dan, thank you. Sounded a little bit like an acceptance speech, however. We'll be back to you. On the Republican side, however, in that 11th Congressional District, there are two more candidates. One of them will be opposing whoever wins between Harrison and Kondorski, and it looks like a runaway. Robert Hudak, the 45-year-old the, uh, attorney, is against a 69-year-old painting and decorating contractor from Pittston, Samuel Daly, and Hudak has 73% of the vote, with 16% of the vote tabulated at this time in the 11th Congressional District. Uh, we have Bob Constantini standing by live. Hopefully, we're going to be able to bring you a live report on that very soon uh, in that race. So once again, it is Robert Hudak and Samuel Daly with Hudak uh, way comfortably ahead. It looks like he will be the candidate. Now, let's go to Bob Constantini standing by live in Wilkes-Barre with Mr. Hudak. Bob? Mr. Hudak, uh, since the days of Dwight Eisenhower, only one Republican has made it to the Congress in the 11th District. Are you up for the slaughter, or are you going to make this a serious campaign? And if so, how, perhaps against Paul Kondorski, a man who hasn't, uh, who doesn't, who isn't that widely known? I think the Republicans can win. We, we won here just a few years ago. Uh, the recent commissioner's race with uh, Mr. Kondorski and Mr. Phillips shows that a, a good Republican can win with the right issues. And I've, I've won in the other counties before in 1978 when I ran against Dan Flood. So clearly, I can win this district. How do you intend to do that? It's an uphill battle for you, isn't it? I don't think it's an uphill battle at all. Keep in mind that Mr. Kondorski, if he's the winner, is going to win the, the race with barely 50% of the vote. There are a lot of unhappy Democrats out there, and we invite those Democrats to join our campaign starting right now. Quickly, what do you think the big issue will be in the 11th district? One of the main issues is going to be economic development and jobs, and it's going to be a, a vast difference in how you do that. Is it going to be more federal government, more spending, more taxes, or are we going to depend on the private industry, those industries that will bring in real jobs? Which side do you support? Clearly the Republican side that says real jobs through private industry. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hudak. You're welcome. I guess the campaign begins tomorrow. That's it here from the county courthouse. Robert Hudak, Hazleton attorney, will be running against the Democratic candidate, probably Paul Kondorski. Bob Constantini, live with the Instacamp from the Zone County Courthouse. Thank you very much, Bob. And of course, our crews are standing by live. If there's a major announcement in that race, we will go back to those crews live. Now we'd like to turn our attention to some other races that you'll be interested in. In the 6th Congressional District. Now, in that 6th District, there is no Republican candidate on the ballot in the Democratic race. An eight-term congressman is running for another term. Take a look on your screen. You'll see the results. Gus Yatron is from Reading, former professional heavyweight boxer, sold his ice cream business when he went to Congress. Well, he's really leading his opponent, Paul Clark. You see the totals there. He's got 85% of the votes. Paul Clark, only 2,000 votes. That's about 14% of the results coming in right now. No one? Okay, Frank, let's go to the 10th Congressional District right now, where in the 10th District, Congressman Joe McDade, of course, of Scranton, has been the representative since way back in 1962. He's unopposed in the Republican side in the primary. He'll be there in the fall. But on the Democratic side, he has two challengers looking to run against him. Dean Basiliga from Lackawanna County has run before, and Wanda Shirk uh, is from Potter County. She's a newcomer there, but he is comfortably in the lead, 76% to 23%. Meanwhile, Newswatch 16's Kathy Bellick is standing by live now in Scranton to tell us a little bit more about that race. Kathy? Well, no, and there obviously was no question about the Republican race. Uh, Congressman McDade has held that seat for 12 terms of more than 20 years, so obviously he would be the winner being unopposed this year. Now, the other race, Dean Basiliga has run against McDade several times, 
they never really give it in any competition. So if that's any, if that's any indication of what will happen in November, who knows? But that's exactly the way it looks. You saw the numbers, and our numbers haven't really changed that much as far as what you have on the board. So back to you in the studio. Thank you very much, Kathy. We have got another race that we'd like to bring you up to date on, and that is in the 15th Congressional District now, the nomination for, by the Democratic Party. There is a six-way race for that Democratic nomination in the 15th Congressional District. Only one candidate on the Republican slate. That's incumbent three-term Congressman Don Ritter of Coopersburg. Now, because he's running unopposed as a Republican, we're going to pass on his vote totals because he will be on the ballot in November. We'll go right to the Democratic race. Take a look at your screen. Now, the top vote-getter will always be first, and that is Jane Wells Schooley with about 10% of the precincts in in that 15th district. She's got about almost 8,000 votes there. Gene Knopf is coming in second with 21% of the vote, about 4,100. Also, Bernard Berg, 2,588 votes. That's 13%. Charles Butt, he's got about uh, 1,600 votes. We've got about six people running here, as we said. Jack Smith's about 1,400. at 7% of the vote in the 15th district. And Dick Cusick, he's got uh, 1,137. at 6% of the vote in that 15th congressional district. No? Not as many candidates, so let's go to the 17th congressional district and see who's in there. George Geekus, you'll recognize his name. He's an incumbent. He's from Harrisburg on the Republican side. He's first sent to Congress in 1982, former district attorney, before uh, uh, serving in both the Pennsylvania House and Senate. He's against Max Lappenfeld, and way out in front, George Hekas is, as the incumbent. He has 85% of the vote, with only 8% uh, tabulated at this point, but it looks as though he's going to keep that lead comfortably. Let's go over to the Democratic side now, because the Democratic candidates uh, in the 17th Congressional District will be Sarah Flieger with 68% right now, and there, again, 8% of the votes are in against William Minnick, 31%. That's in the 17th district. Frank? Okay, we have got a lot of state races, nominations in state races that are also up for grabs, and we'd like to turn our attention to one of those right now, and that is Attorney General, the Democratic nomination. Now, in the race for state Attorney General, Republican incumbent Leroy Zimmerman is running unopposed, so we will not risk his vote total. He'll be on the ballot in November. Also running unopposed, the Consumer Party candidate for Attorney General, Arthur Liebeson. Now, we won't list his totals either. So come this fall, it will be Republican Zimmerman, Liebeson of the Consumer Party against one of these two Democrats. Again, you see the top vote-getter on the top of your screen, Robert Colville, who is the Allegheny County District Attorney. He's a former detective, Pittsburgh Police Superintendent. He's got about 114,000 votes, but you can see that that's pretty close with only 19% of the precincts in. Alan Ertl from Lycoming County with about 108,000, almost 109,000 there. Very close race. Now, we have... Uh, He's like 16th Craig Stevens, who is following that race very closely, and he spoke with Alan Ertl about tonight's results. Here in Lycoming County, Alan Ertl is at a friend's house, and he is awaiting the results of this election, as is everyone else. How are you doing, Alan? Well, it appears that we're doing very well. We're losing Allegheny County, but we're losing it by less than we expected. In addition to that, we've gotten some other counties in, which we're doing better than we expected in some of them, and in fact, in Dolphin County, we're doing about 10 to 1. Obviously, we cannot hold those numbers throughout the night, but we're very confident at this point. How confident are you? Well, I don't know how you can rate confidence in degrees, but I feel pretty confident at this point. But until we see what's happening in Philadelphia, which is a very large number of votes, one can't be sure of anything. Okay, thank you, Alan. The results will be coming in all night. Newswatch 16 will keep you informed, and we'll have the latest with Alan Ertl later tonight for you. Craig Stevens, Newswatch 16, with the Ertl campaign, awaiting results here in Loyal Fox Township. All right, let's take a look at another statewide race right now for Auditor General on the Republican side for Auditor General. Remember Susan Sandeman, the first woman and youngest person ever appointed to the State Public Utilities Commission? Well, she's 37 years old. She is running along with... Uh, uh, Tom Swift. They have 19% of the vote tabulated right now, 53% for Swift, 40% for Susan Sandeman at this point, and Eleanor Thomas has only 6% of the vote, so we'll have to watch that closely with only 19% of the vote in. Let's go over to the Democratic side and see what's happening there for Auditor General Frank Latino with 62% right now, and uh, Don Bailey, who served two terms in Congress but lost his seat when his district was reapportioned. He only has 37% at this point. Remember now, both the Republican and Democrat nominees for Auditor General today will be on that November ballot, along with the Consumer Party candidate, Annette Harris. And if you're wondering about the incumbent Auditor General, remember, Al Benedict is running for state treasurer today. And Nolan, we have one other state race we'd like to bring you up to date on, and that involves state treasurer on the Democratic side, because the current state treasurer, our Bud Dwyer, is running again unopposed. So again, we will not be listing his vote totals on the screen. Also unopposed in November, or actually in this uh, vote, is Consumer Party candidate, 35-year-old Priscilla Thomas of Pittsburgh. Now, 
She was a welder until she was laid off three years ago. Now she's on public assistance. Dwyer is the Republican. Thomas is the Consumer Party candidate. They will be on the November ballot, and they will face one of the Democrats. Let's go to our computer again, take a look at some of the vote totals. Now, what you're going to see on your screen in just a second is the top vote totals in that Democratic race for state treasurer. Catherine Knoll. Catherine Knoll. Catherine Baker Knoll is uh, the official title. She is a government administrator from the Keys Rock. So far, with 19% of the statewide vote in, she is leading with 93,000 votes. That's 40%. Al Benedict, who right now is the Auditor General, well, he's got about 30% of the vote, 69,000. Now, we've got a couple other people that are also re running, but uh, those are the two top vote-getters, and those are the ones that we are concentrating on now with 19% of the vote in. No? All right, we'll be watching that closely again because only 19% is in. And our coverage of the 84 vote will continue with a look at the state Senate and House seats up locally and an important question on the ballot in Stuckel County. And, of course, we'll have all the other news, including the story of a deadly fire in Pike County. And look at the shuttle and its satellite repairman. We'll be right back. The Community Concert Association of Scranton announces their 57th anniversary. Members will see some of the outstanding artists of the New York Metropolitan Opera, including the Metropolitan Opera Ballet, Kathleen Battle, the outstanding young soprano, a most exciting new voice at the Metro, the Canterbury Trio, and the Bucharest Philharmonic of Romania, among others. All concerts will be at the Masonic Temple at 8 p.m. Join the Community Concert Association of Scranton. Ask about our new family membership. Call 342-4137. Well, welcome back to the election 84, and of course, uh, things are coming, just starting to come now. And some of the races you've been seeing, only 19, so one of them, only 5% of the returns in and scattered, uh, some of the uh, statewide races. But they're starting to come in fast now. Hopefully, our computers and the state's computers, Frank, will be able to, uh, to keep up with it, and we'll be bringing to you fast and furiously. Frank? I know, and we have some uh, new numbers that are coming in on that race in the 11th Congressional District. If we can get those up on the screen, you'll see that Paul Kandorski, who is the attorney from Manicoke, who challenged incumbent Frank Harrison, is pulling ahead. He's got 48 percent of the vote, about 24,653. Frank Harrison, the incumbent from Wilkes-Barre, 21,000. Newswatch 16's Mark Davis is with Frank Harrison in Wilkes-Barre, and we have a live interview right now at Wilkes-Barre. Mark? Frank, we're here with the candidate at his headquarters at the Sheraton Cross Gates Hotel in downtown Wilkes-Barre. You've just addressed your supporters here this evening, but I get the impression from what you've said and what you've said as you've gone around the room is things look bad, but you're not really conceding just yet, are you? Well, I, I, what I've said, of course, is that the numbers from Luzerne County are a significant disadvantage, but that there are paper ballot counties out there, and I'm not about to disenfranchise them by making a definitive statement. Uh, if, in fact, the results as we know them now prove to be the results, then I want everybody to know that I will support the Democratic nominee and I will congratulate Mr. Conjorski. But I think that we owe those people who vote in those counties with paper ballots to wait and see what they said before we make a final decision. Is it uh, too sizable an advantage to overtake even if you do extremely well in those paper ballot counties? Well, I don't know, because that depends on the turnout in those counties, which we don't know the answer to right now. Okay, as long as we're dealing with hypotheticals here, and you're saying if uh, the results continue as is, if indeed Mr. Kandorski does become the nominee, will Frank Harrison be back in, say, two years to challenge Mr. Kandorski if he should win in November? Well, I, I gave you an answer, which is that I will support the Democratic nominee, whoever he may be. I'm down there. I understand how important it is to have a Democratic member of the House of Representatives. I will support whoever the nominee is, and I think it is really enough right now to say that. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Harrison. Thank you. 10th, 11th District Congressman Frank Harrison saying things do not look good, but in all fairness to his supporters in the outlying counties, the paper ballot counties, he's not ready to concede just yet, but he has told the supporters that things do not really look good because Mr. Kandorski has a sizable lead here in Luzerne County. Mark Davis, he's 16, live with the Instacam at the Sheraton Cross Gates Hotel in downtown Wilkesbury. Nolan, Frank? All right, Mark. While we wait for more information on that race, we've got to bring you up to date on a few others, and one in, is the 23rd Senatorial District, the nomination for Republican in the state Senate. Now, some interesting notes from the 23rd District in that Senate race. The incumbent Senate and President Pro Tem Henry Hager is not seeking re-election. On the Democratic side, Richard Waltz running unopposed. Now, that leaves three candidates fighting it out for the Republican nomination. And there you see Roger Madigan so far with 4%, only 4% of the vote in. He's the top vote-getter, and that's just a few votes. Now, he's from Tawanda. He's a state representative in the 110th District. Second is uh, Steve Anderson. He's got 195 votes. And finally, Arthur Smith in that 23rd Senatorial District 
with about 23% of the vote. That's 130 in that 23rd district. No? Okay, Frank, turning out to the State House of Representatives. Let's start with returns from the 68th State District. That's where another longtime office holder has decided not to seek another term. Republican Warren Spencer retiring after 11 terms in the House. So on the Democratic side right now, two per, or on the Republican side, excuse me, 2% are in. Eugene Irway in the 68th has 85%. Of that vote, but again, only 2% are in for the Republicans in the 68th. Let's look uh, to that other, the other candidate in the 68th is Oliver Bartlett, and uh, he's just not showing up at this point, but again, it's probably too early to tell. Okay, Nolan, we have some returns in now from the 77th Legislative District on the Republican side. Only one Democrat running for the State House in that 77th District, that's Iris Mottis. Now, so we will not list his vote totals. This fall, Smarties will be fighting it out with either the incumbent or his challenger. Now, let's take a look at some of the vote totals there. Lynn Herman. Now, you see that this is really just the beginning of the returns coming in there. She's got 75% of the vote, but that's only 21 ballots so far in that 77th district. And Norman Dobliski, well, he's got seven votes. But so far, Lynn Herman is the leader in that, uh, that district in the 77th legislative district. And turning to the 109th right now for the Democrats. The 109th, of course, is parts of Columbia and Montour County. There's no Republican candidate. The incumbent has only one challenger. The incumbent is Ted Stuban. He has 92% now with 10% in. I think it's relatively safe, even at this close, uh, at this early date, to say the 55-year-old Stuban is probably going to be returned to the State House from the 109th District. All right, now in the 110th Legislative District, that seat is open because incumbent Roger Madigan is running for State Senate. You just saw his totals in that other race in the 23rd District. On the Democratic side of the ballot, Leo Brenner running, un running unopposed. Now, here are the leaders in the seven-way race for the Republican nomination. Top vote-getters so far in the 110th District with 9% in. Paul Riffle, 115 votes, that's 35%. J. Scott Chadwick, he's got 27% of the vote. Tom Fairchild, 17%. Michael Brutzman, 8% in the 110th District. Remember, there are seven people who are running for this uh, 110th District nomination on the Republican side. Wallace Cady's got 4%. Bob Ford also has 4%, and one other candidate to bring you up to date on, and that is James Stepanski. He's got 1% of the vote in the 110th Legislative District. Frank, let's turn to Lackawanna and Wayne counties right now. This will be the 112th uh, District. In that 112th, uh, there's only one name on the Republican ballot. It's John Luciani. Uh, in the 111th, we'll take a look at this first. In the 111th, uh, we have no report in the 111th at right now, so let's look at the 112th first. This, of course, is the, is the fight that we've been looking for uh, so far tonight on the Democratic side because on the Republican ballot it's only John Luciani. Fred Bellardi has 51% of the vote with 56% of the vote in, and uh, Thomas Gilhooley, who's been waging quite a battle, has 48%. It's very close right now, and our Kathy Bellich is standing by. She's live now in Scranton with another report on that race. Kathy? No, the race is very close, but it seems that we do have a winner on the Democratic side. Incumbent Fred Bellardi used to be a Republican, now a Democrat ran. Tom Gilhooley did give him quite a fight, but he called you about an hour ago and told you congratulations. Now, it was very close. Did you expect the race to be so close? Well, Kathy, every time we run in an election, we start from being behind. And we were in session up until March 28th or 29th, and then we had the geodiasis hearing. Uh, we didn't have the chance to campaign like my opponent did. And I must congratulate him, him for a very spirited, a very aggressive campaign, and he certainly was a gentleman during this campaign. Uh, yes, I did expect the race to be close because I didn't have the time to put into this campaign. Now, you had said that your switching between Republican and Democratic parties would not affect the election, and he had contended that it would. Do you feel that another reason it was so close was because of your party switch? I think that that was one of the reasons. I think that uh, he made an issue out of the fact that I switched parties, and that had certainly become the issue in the campaign. I'm gratified to know that on Fred Bellardi, on my voting record over the past six years in Harrisburg, that the only issue that they've come up with was the fact that I've switched parties. Why did you um, do that? Well, I switched parties, and I said when I did that switch, and I honestly said to the people of the 112th District, I believe that I should have gotten re-elected as a Republican in the State House of Representatives as a Republican of the 112th District. But I think that with the majority party in the House of Representatives being Democratic, the city of Scranton with the Democratic mayor 
The county commissioners, now the majority county commissioners, with two Democrats running county government, with Dean Colley, the state representative, my friend, my colleague, that Fred Bellardi would have been more effective as a Democrat for the people. In other words, I believe I'd be able to do more for the people of my district as a Democrat, as opposed to being ineffective, selfishly, as a Republican just to get reelected. Okay, thanks very much. Congratulations and good luck in November. And that's the story in the 112th district for the State House. Back to you. Thank you very much, Kathy. We're going to stay in Lackawanna County and take a look at some vote totals now in the 114th legislative district. Now, while you're looking at these totals, I'll explain something to you. Frank Serafini is the incumbent. He's running unopposed as a Republican in the 114th. That's in Lackawanna County. Three Democrats want to unseat him. Here's the way the district breaks down. John Wansack, who has run in the past, is the top vote getter so far, but the vote totals are small. Only 32% of the precincts in, 831 votes. Now, Georgiana Cole, who is active with uh, many senior citizens and handicapped groups in the area, well, she's coming in second. She's got 27% of the vote. And John Holland, a newcomer to the political race, has 18% of the vote in the 114th district. Let's go to the 150s now. There's a lot of state districts, of course, and there are a lot of candidates for the Democrats here. In the 115th, Lackawanna and Wayne counties have a long slate of candidates because Joe Wargo, who had served in the House since 1948, is not seeking another term. One Republican, Andrew Sira, is guaranteed a place on the fall ballot. Now, here are the nine Democrats in the running, and this is the way it's shaping up. Only 2%. We have very small totals from Lackawanna County, perhaps also from Wayne County. Ed Sabak at the present time, 33%. David Krantz, 22%. And John Mello, or correction, yes, John Mello, 19%, and uh, Lupini has 11%, and the candidates just keep coming. As we said, there were nine of them, and here are the other ones. Uh, we won't call them the also rans right now, because with only 2% in, you never know what's going to happen. But there are Wittenbretter and Haggis' votes, uh, or Garner's totals at 5%, and then Bishop and Zitterman uh, bringing it up uh, toward the end. So that's for the 115th uh, Democratic uh, state district. Quite a few candidates in that race. Now we're going to turn our attention to the 119th at the state house race as well. No Republicans on the ballot at all. Three Democrats trying to unseat incumbent state representative Stanley Geraldine so they can represent part of Luzerne County. Okay, Stanley Geraldine is from Manicoke, but he is in second place right now as you see 74% of the returns in that 119th district. Joseph Yeager, who is related to the uh, outgoing candidate Shipnick, well he is the top vote getter right now, 53%. Stanley Geraldine who is from Manicoke in his first term, the incumbent, he's got the, the percentage you see there. Then we've got Edward Bukevich, who has 9% of the vote, and Manicoke school board member Joseph Nicolinas, he's got 6% of the vote so far in that 119th legislative district race. Once again, in the 124th district now for uh, State House, the 124th made up of parts of Lehigh and Schuylkill counties. William Klingerman has held forth there for six terms, but he's not running for re-election. It leaves the ballot positions this fall for the only Democrat in the running, Eugene Morrison. And then for the highest vote getter in today's six-way Republican race, there's what it looks like. David Argall is ahead right now with 10% of the district uh, tabulated at 42%. Richard Cook or Cox has 30% of the vote. And uh, George Willing, 13%. Robert Neifert, 9%. And so it goes down the line. Also in 124th, it would be John Koch with uh, 2% and Michael Natero with 1%. That's it for the 124th. Of course, we're still getting a lot of returns, and that's why some of the numbers are very small. In the State House, the race for the 132nd Legislative District. 6% of the returns in. We're going to take a look at how Lehigh County voters did today as they picked a Republican and a Democrat to vie for that 132nd State House seat. Retirement of five-term Democrat Representative Kurt Zweigel leaves the field wide open. First, the Republicans. Now you're going to take a look at Helen Nicholas there. She's the top vote getter, but still only 6% of the returns in. She got 46% of that 6%. Robert Piotrobin, he's got 37%. And we've got one other Republican running for that nomination. Paul Schantz, he's got 15% of the vote. Now we take a look at the Democrats in that 132nd legislative district. Again, we've got 60% of the votes in. John Pressman, so far the top vote getter, 50%. You see 1,300 to his count there. Robert Eckert has got 30%, only about 800, so he is uh, almost doubled by the front runner there. John Clark has got 266 votes, and Y.G. Joseph is the low man on the totem pole there. He's uh, got 9%, but just a few votes less than Y.G. Joseph in that 132nd legislative district. Let's go to Northampton County next now for the 137th district. Voters there 
went to the polls. The Republican incumbent, Leonard Grupo, is running unopposed. So on the Democratic ballot, here are the latest totals for the two candidates. 82% of the vote counted in Northampton County, and Heller way comfortably ahead, 61% to Zavos, 38%. Can I give you some background on the race in the 138th legislative district? This is the nomination for that Republican office. After 10 years in the Pennsylvania House, the 138th District Representative, Russell Kowalison, has decided not to run for another term. So the voters in parts of Monroe and Northampton County had their choice from among two Republicans and four Democrats. Here's the way the races shape up, at least on the Republican side. James Oaks, so far with 83%. Now, that's a, that's a pretty good number of the precincts in. 83% of the vote. He's got 68% of it. He's almost a two-to-one margin over John DeFazio. He's got 31% of the vote on the Republican side of that race for 138. Now, taking a look at the Democratic side, we've got about four candidates that are running there. Frank Yandrasevich, he's got 49% of the vote. Well, he's also got the, the next man almost doubled two to one in the vote count. 80% of the precincts reporting in. John Tinman, he's got 32%. We've got a couple other candidates seeking the Democratic nomination. Larry Bray, he's only got 396. And Eugene Cicchianello, he's got 358 votes in the race for 138th Legislative District. And up to Pike, Susquehanna, and Wayne Counties, the 139th State District right now. Republican Representative Bill Foster not on the ballot after seven terms in the House. The Democrats didn't put up a candidate on the ballot, so two Republicans are going at it to see who will be on the fall ballot with, of course, a very good chance of succeeding Foster. They are Jerry Bermeline or Bermelin with 61% of the vote and Gilpin with 38%, only 9% tabulated at this point, but a comfortable lead for Bermelin in the 139th. So in the 171st state house race, incumbent Democrat Ruth Ruddy running unopposed, so she will definitely be on the November ballot. Now, voters in parts of Center in Mifflin County did have a choice today with two Republicans on the ballot. Now, here they are. They are Charles Whitmer with only 11% of the vote in in the 171st. Well, she's got 54% of it. That's about 221. Kind of a small vote total so far. And Dennis Shiabika, well, he's got 45% of the vote, 184 to his count in the 171st legislative district. Okay, let's go to Lehigh County, and this is the last state house race we'll have for a little while. Anyway, the incumbent state rep there is running unchallenged in the Republican primary, but Paul Semmel of Lehigh County will be facing one of two challengers from Burke County this fall. And let's check the totals for the Democratic primary there in the 187th. It's Joe Dalton with 70%. And Nelabovich with 29%, that's with 21% of the vote in, so a comfortable lead for Dalton at this time. Frank? Okay, we also have a couple of questions, and one of them has to do with uh, some people in Schofield County. They were asked if they uh, would like the Spruce Creek Energy Company to go ahead with plans for coal gasification. Now, we're going to have some returns later, but right now, we just don't have any numbers that are coming in on that question for you Schofield County voters. We'll have those a little bit later as our election coverage continues, no? All right, and of course, as this continues, we'll be doing a full hour now of reports for you, both on the latest election uh, returns as also in tonight's news. We'll have the weather for you. Joe Zone will have some sports. Tom Clark standing by with the forecast. So let's get to our first item right now. Thank you. We have some other news tonight, Nolan. Fire officials in Pike County still trying to pinpoint a cause to this morning's devastating fire in the small community of Greeley. That's just northeast of Milford. 43-year-old Fred Fink and his two children, 12-year-old Derek, 9-year-old Melissa, died in that blaze. Fire officials say Fink, who was a volunteer fireman, did not have a smoke detector in the house. That may have been be the tragic kind of difference. Law that states that you must have some kind of a smoke detector. One woman escaped from the burning home. Officials say a woman friend of the family jumped from the second floor window of that burning Pike County home. Two Scranton men are still in jail tonight, charged in connection with more than a half dozen arson fires in Scranton's Hill section. 26-year-old Michael Karzanowski and his half-brother, 29-year-old Fred Huntley, are charged with setting fires this morning in garages and sheds throughout the Hill section. This is one of the torch buildings. The two men are in the Lackawanna County Jail on arson charges. They're being held a $90,000 bail each. And coming up, we've got more news, and that includes a big day for the Space Shuttle astronauts. Plus, a look at what the Russians are up to. The story, plus more of the 84 vote. News Watch 16 update continues. Mm -hmm.